Alright, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. guys welcome back to the channel I'm Jish and today we're going to be talking oil coolers now the standard oil cooler on the XJ650 it's seen better days it's rusty it's massively massively mashed up all the hoses they're looking a bit nasty and yeah we're gonna sort all that out now rather than replacing it with the original we're gonna upgrade it we're gonna make it look a bit nicer we're gonna make it just all round a much better finish. Get something that actually draws your attention to it rather than it just being there and being part of the bike. And how are we gonna do that? With this oil cooler, of course. Now for the keen eyed viewers, you can probably see there is AN fittings on this. If you know what AN fittings are, they're not very common on bikes. They're more of a car, automotive, high performance thing. And I have always wondered why you don't see them on bikes. They are really good for high pressure, oil, fuel, all that stuff. They look good, they're really easy to install and the parts are modular, which means you can make them as long as you're short. Pretty much, there's a lot of accessories out there for them. Now, if you don't know what I'm on about, look at these. This is an AN6 90 degree fitting and this is the oil hose to go along with it. These parts were kindly supplied by Advocate Motorsport. He sells all these fittings in different styles, different angles, lengths, sizes, everything. Go check out his website. He even offers a fit-up service if you don't want to do it yourself. And that there is something you don't see in the industry. So link down below, go and check him out. And yeah, let's carry on. So you're probably wondering how we're gonna get this to fit instead of this. Now, there is some modification required to this unit. Um, it doesn't have any bracketry because this is actually for a car. Uh, it's got bracketry here, but this is not ideal. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing is actually taking these off and cutting them out. If you look at this one, you've got a mount here, which fits into the frame and a pin goes through, uh, holding it in place. We've also got these brackets down here. For now, I'm gonna be working on this section right here and welding it on top of that one. If you actually look at these side by side, there isn't actually a fat lot difference in them. This looks bigger than this, but actually it's only ever so slightly more thicker, but the actual width of it are near enough identical. It's just the actual brackets on the side that gives it the bulk. So once they're off, this is gonna look sweet. So for now, we're gonna get this section fitted and we will worry about this end a bit later on. So that is the oil cooler side sorted, ready for welding. As you saw, I left little notches on so I know which orientation it has to be and where it needs to be mounted. It's gonna look so cool. But these aren't the only parts that need welding. The oil filter housing, sandwich plate, whatever the part is called, this piece right here, these have these nasty lines on. These aren't any good for the setup that we need because they're not AN fittings. What we need to do now is take off these hard lines and install these. These are AN weld-on fittings, making the complete unit compatible. Um, but yeah, this thing is real gritty and dirty and horrible, and obviously doesn't suit the bike, so this needs a good cleaning up. So let's head over and go and see Matt at Rushworth Performance, who can help us out with the welding and get these put on nice and properly.
So the actual oil cooler core is now fitted and I'm really happy with how that's sitting. Since filming that section I've actually been away working and in that time Matt has been busy welding the rest of the parts that I need i.e. the actual sandwich plate. So yeah, that is literally all the fabrication side of it done. It's now just a simple case of fitting the lines, getting them cut to length, getting them pushed onto the fittings, making it one complete unit. So yeah, let's get this part fitted. the lines all made up and they look pretty cool. I will say I did actually have to change the fittings to a different angle just because I wouldn't work with our setup. It's one of those things that you kind of don't know until you get there but hey. But Tom he really looked after me. He got me all sorted up and, and got me these new fittings straight away. So, so yeah it's literally just a case of getting these screwed up and put on the bike. He also supplied me with this little bracket to tie them together to keep them all tucked up and neat and well away from the front wheel. So I can't wait any longer. I want to see how these look on the bike. I want to get these fitted. So, what do you think? It is much, much better than this ratty old thing. Um, let me know down below what you think. Let me know if this is something that you're interested in doing to your bike. I will say now, I don't know how this is gonna fit with the exhaust and I can't fit the exhaust in the current position that the bike's in. So, I've left the lines a little bit long just so it can maneuver away from the exhaust and not have any issues there. But yeah, I think it looks fantastic. I think the bike is yeah, I'm going to say every single episode, it's getting there. And this is just one part of many that is going to be transforming on this bike. If you want to get up to date with this build, if you want to be there before anyone else, join our Patreon. Link down below. It starts at $2 a month and it helps this channel massively. The Patreon family is growing and I thank every single one of you who supports me. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next video. Peace.